folks. Viewers who have followed my video productions these past few years are aware that my inspiration for publishing alternative news on the internet was a spiritual experience that I encountered back in the spring of 2003 when I came to the realization that a significant astronomical event would happen that was interrelated to the scriptures as well as to end time philosophy. I began reporting and publishing information on Planet X Nibiru in earnest at that time and I have never wavered in my belief because like I have said many times the feelings and beliefs that we have whether they are acquired or inherited come from deep within our spiritual realm. They are planted like a seed which grows and develops into something that is useful and beneficial to many people. Now I am not a scientist or an astrophysicist but I do possess a great deal of knowledge about earth sciences and what's happening to our planet from a geophysical standpoint. I'm not much of a, a theorist but there is a theory which I consider to be important that I would like to present. It's a theory which cannot be discredited nor can it be definitively proven. But still the speculation is one to consider and ponder upon. There is a relationship between the entrance of Nibiru into our solar system and other current world phenomenon which the mainstream media is not telling us. Here is what I mean. There is a relationship between the heating of our planet and the oceans. The heating of other planets that are now taking place within our solar system. The melting of the Earth's ice caps and glaciers. The sudden emergence of sinkholes all over the world. The increase in red tides, rivers and lakes that are turning red, and red rain and the flyby of the brown dwarf Nibiru and her accompanying orbital spheres. Again, this is a knowledge that I would risk taking because it is coming from a more ancient part of myself which understands and knows. It is absolute in understanding that there is an interconnected relationship between the crossing of Nibiru and catastrophic earth changes changes in the behavior of our Sun and changes in the behavior of other planets in our solar system. I am asking my viewers not to take my word for this but to begin researching these topics on your own. I am asking my viewers to begin their own urgent investigations of the worldwide suppression of news that is reporting on Nibiru and to begin looking into the relationships between the current phenomenon which I just mentioned, all of which are getting more pronounced as each year passes. There is a relationship there. There is something to be learned. Here is something that each of you should know and understand. It's imperative that you discuss this among yourselves and with those who are eager to learn or who are open-minded to what's now taking place. And this has to do with the geological changes happening below the Earth's crust. The shifting of the interior behavior of the lava and mantle of the Earth, the changes in the way plates collide and arrange themselves just beneath the surface of the Earth. There are huge changes taking place deep in the interior of the Earth, and my belief is that these changes are a direct result of the pull of gravity coming from the second sun nemesis as it approaches the inner solar system and acts upon our own sun and the gravity balance of the orbiting planets. It would be impossible for an object the size and mass of nemesis, a brown dwarf star, with its own orbiting objects traveling with it, to pass through our solar system without disrupting the balance of orbiting planets and pulling upon our own Sun in such a way that changes in the Sun's activity become quite pronounced. Any changes in our Sun's activity would almost immediately affect our own planet, including its interior, if the pressures were great enough. It's time to act as truth researchers 
there are far too many who wish to distort the truth. They use every tactic in the book to keep you in the dark. Now I know there are many of my viewers who are diligently researching the answers to the Earth's sudden and drastic changes that are taking place. But we should all be doing this. We have to report and share what we learn with our friends and neighbors everywhere because there is a worldwide conspiracy to hide the truth about so many things from those who populate the planet. Remember this, it is the meek who will one day inherit the earth. But this suppressed astronomical story about Nibiru's crossover and how it will alter the earth and the solar system just happens to be one of those many things that are being kept in the dark. As I mentioned, there are strange happenings taking place within the interior of our planet. This is something that is being reported because it is a story that cannot be hidden from the public. It is there to be seen and noticed. Why are giant fountains of lava suddenly pouring out of some of the most dangerous volcanoes on the entire planet? And why are so many long dormant volcanoes suddenly roaring back to life? According to Volcano Discovery, 35 major volcanoes either are erupting right now or have just recently erupted and dozens of others are stirring. Something is pushing magna up through the crust of the earth at a number of key spots around the planet. The spectacular eruption of Mount Etna in Italy is making headlines all over the world. This latest eruption is the second this year and comes just a month after Mount Etna experienced a flurry of activity in late January. On the island of Sicily, the giant fountains of lava that are coming out of Mount Etna can be seen 30 kilometers away, as seen in this video clip. On the other side of the world, a constant stream of molten rock has been springing out of Guatemala's volcano of fire since February 25th. It was the volcano's second eruption this year. And in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, a fire hose of lava has been pouring out of the Kilauea volcano since December 31st. Take a look.
Meanwhile, a number of large volcanoes that have been dormant for a very long time all over the world have started springing back to life. For instance, the only active volcano in India has suddenly started spewing lava and ash after having been silent for 150 years. So many of these long dormant volcanoes are roaring back to life, and why this is suddenly happening now is puzzling many of the experts. And as you have seen, this isn't isolated to just one or two geographic regions. It literally is happening all over the globe. Last month, Indonesia's Mount Sinabung in the southern hemisphere erupted seven times in the space of a single day, while authorities in the northern hemisphere were warning us that four of Iceland's biggest volcanoes are preparing to erupt. Indonesia and Iceland are about as far apart as you can get, and yet they are both being affected by this worldwide phenomenon. Now, without a doubt, something definitely appears to also be causing a significant increase in worldwide seismic activity. So let's talk about earthquakes for a moment. A website known as The Big Wobble recently published an article that included two extraordinary maps. The first map showed the number of major earthquakes from January 1900 to January of 1917. And the second map showed the number of major earthquakes since the beginning of this century. The difference between the two maps was startling to say the least. It is becoming extremely difficult to deny that something is happening to the crust of our planet, and many are becoming concerned about what we could soon experience if the level of seismic activity continues to rise. We already talked about Mount Etna, but a much greater threat in Italy appears to be awakening under the city of Naples. A massive supervolcano known as Campi Flagre is close to a critical state, and if it erupts, the consequences will be beyond catastrophic. The following comes from the National Geographic. A long, quiet, yet huge supervolcano that lies under uh, half a million people in Italy may be waking up and approaching a critical state. Based on physical measurements and computer modeling, Magma could be approaching the critical degassing pressure at the volcano in the metropolitan area of Naples, one of the most densely inhabited areas in the world, and where accelerating deformation and heating are currently being observed. If that supervolcano would, were to fully erupt, millions would die. The skies in the northern hemisphere would be darkened for months, and the resulting volcanic winter would cause famines all around the globe. We live at a time when our planet is becoming increasingly unstable, and a major natural disaster could change all of our lives in a single moment. Just because our lives have been somewhat normal for an extended period of time does not mean that they will always be this way and those that are ignoring the rumblings of our planet do so at their own peril. There are many signs that foretell of an impending catastrophe. The scientific data speaks for itself, as does the numbers and intensity of the events that have already taken place in the world. If you really care about the planet, then spend more time observing your surroundings and less time fixated on your cell phones and remedial news stories that are only meant to distract you from what is really going on in the world. This is how we will come to know and gain a better perspective on those many things that the media doesn't want to report, that are deliberately being kept in the dark from you, the viewer. Be sure to follow the latest Planet X news pertaining to climate and earth changes on our Facebook page and follow the latest alternative news on our media website. In the meantime, stay safe and keep looking to the sky.
aka Scott. Everybody calls me Chris. But my name is Scott. And uh, I picked Crisis Actor making fun of the CIA for the Sandy Hook event. So that's why I used that name. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to bring you what our solar system really looks like. There are 397 planets in our solar system. And this is uh, from Patty L. Broussard's um, work. The, uh, the second sun that you see there at the top of the screen, that is the Blue Kachina. And that's what we uh, often see when we see the second sun. But there are 397 planets, exoplanets. Many of these are um, mechanically driven. And uh, there is your real solar system. So, this is why we're seeing so many different things all over the place. And once we get rid of the flat plate, nine planets concept, you can begin to get a, a grip on reality of what's really going on out there. And as you can see, there are huge numbers of planets. There's clusters where they, uh, they come together and um, move around freely and uh, it is completely different than anything that you thought or believed and this will cause some cognitive dissonance I do believe. So uh, my work has proven to me that this is in fact true. There are so many different things flying around out there. Um, so anyway, let's get on with the pictures. This is Ambler, Alaska, looking to the south at 8.47 a.m. And we've got two UFOs right there. And moving forward, we got them again. They've moved over a little bit. And then you get a whole bunch of them. Yep. They do exist, just like I saw in my front yard. Same airport, moving along in the sequence of shots. We have this, and you know, we've seen what looks like a like an electrical discharge coming off the sun. However, I'm just theorizing here. Um, what if this was a, an actual planet here and this light, you know, this is what is coming off the edges of it. Um, could this be the object that's causing the halos? It seems to have that same hue that we see with the halos. And let me progress forward here a little bit more. You know, could this be the sun simulator in front of it you know could that be light actually coming from the back being our real sun and i do see an object down here as well probably going to be tough to see it on your screen but it is there and this this light source does seem to have straight edges leading to me leading me to believe that this may be the uh, sun simulator so my other theory there of light coming from the back of this um, seems to have some merit and one of my subs had sent in this halo that he caught 
and uh, this is taken somewhere down in the islands uh, below Florida and um, further down I can't remember exactly where but uh, thank you so much for sending that in that's a pretty awesome halo but could that halo be what we're seeing just like I showed you a second ago Interesting theory nonetheless. And once again at another airport, Anatovic, looking to the south, we have the same phenomenon. And as we progress forward, we can see this very large orb here. Keep going back. Is this an object here? Is that the striped planet? Certainly could be. So what do we have here? Do we have an interaction between the sun and some of these, these objects as it moves closer? Don't know. Is this the... Uh, Diamonds in the sky. The Beatles, Lucy, Diamonds in the Sky. And sorry, I can't sing, so. I believe that was Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Sorry, I had that wrong. But anyway, um, another uh, angle here at the Anatovic Airport. And, you know, I've been looking at these camps <clears throat> for couple of years now so you know when I see things that I haven't seen before you know and this seems to be somewhat of a theme here um, because I keep seeing the same thing and uh, different camera angles different airports so are we getting more of an interaction going on between these objects well that certainly seems to make sense Well, we do know there is a striped planet out there. Um, there's one planet with a big white stripe in it. We've seen that many times. And now I'm going to show you the sequence here. And what makes me think that this could be the object is, you know, we've all seen where they just drop down a short chemtrail. But this is unusual that it actually grows in thickness and length as we progress forward and that is uncharacteristic usually a chemtrail just begins to um, spread out and and this does not it just if anything it elongates and it holds its thickness and actually gets closer and the more I do this, the more I can actually see an uh, orb shape associated with this. So I believe this is uh, the striped planet. That's my belief. I'm not telling you you have to believe. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. All right, I'm just showing what I see and what I think I what I think it is, based on my own research. And take it or leave it. And this is Beaver looking to the southwest at 2:02 p.m. And what's interesting to me is that we can see a striped planet right there. And then we also see the orb, the uh, red orb, <clears throat> the nemesis star, perhaps, brown dwarf. But we also have the striped planet in the same view. 
Now I know this is faint. I'll try to enhance it so maybe you can see it a little better, but um, there it is. Alright, I'm going to show you this. You know, I can't really explain it or anything like that, so um, I'm just showing you what I'm what I'm looking at here, but um, this is very unusual because you've got very different sized orbs here, you know, so a, a lens flare is usually um, very similar in size or um, looks like whatever the image it is that it's flaring off of. Um, this, these things are so um, varying that it makes me uh, think that there's some validity to what's actually here. And let's go forward now. And we do know that these objects coming in have moons and things like that. Kind of interesting. Now this is very interesting as it is um, showing the uh, pterodactyl looking uh, um, thing that we've seen before. This is a huge, huge, huge creature. Um, don't know what it is, but we've seen it several times now. A pilot had spotted this thing before and said he had never seen anything with a wingspan of 20 feet or so like this before. It looked like a pterodactyl. So, um, you know, I've spotted it. Well, Tarki has found it for me. And, uh, um, and I've also spotted it many times. So, this thing exists and it's out there. What it is exactly, we don't know. But, um, it's huge. And here's another picture of the big bird up here. The thing is enormous. All right, so here's something that's uh, anomalous and quite unusual from April 13th. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a plasma discharge or something like that. Very unusual. Never seen anything like it. This is from uh, Cape Spencer, looking to the east. This was on uh, April 11th at 10.54 a.m.
Well, this is going to do it for Easter 2017. These are from uh, April 14th. That's my favorite right there. Because that is obviously behind that chemtrail. And the uh, shell tards want to know why <clears throat> this thing disappears. Well, it's because of the chemtrails, the uh, light diffraction, and the metal particulates, <clears throat> reflections, things like that. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they fail. And when you get the light just right, these objects can be seen. So anyway, hope everybody had a good day and thank you for watching and we'll see what next week brings. But that right there is irrefutable.